Yo, yo, what's going on, y'all? It's your boy Devon Tarot in raw form, and welcome to another Help Me Devon raw tutorial in the studio. And today, in this Help Me Devon raw tutorial in the studio, I'll be showing you guys a piece of hardware slash software from Sonarworks called the Sonarworks Reference 4 Studio Edition with mic. Now, you may be asking yourself, what is this? What is going on? You guys know that I always like to refer you things or softwares or hardwares that I think that you can use that I think that are worth it. So what is this piece of equipment slash hardware? Long story short, what the Sonar Works Reference 4 Studio Edition with Mike uh, does is it helps to get rid of unwanted coloration from your speakers and from your headphones. Now, why would you care about this and why should you care about this? Well, let me break it down to you like this. When it comes to a lot of us recording in our home studio setups or any studio for that matter, there is a lack of, of perfection. No studio room is perfect. No home studio is absolutely perfect. Now, when I say perfect, what I'm saying it is in a sense of treatment of as far as the how the acoustics sound in your room. Sometimes in your room, you're gonna get spots that are boosting 100 hertz or spots that have a lot of sub or bottom in it or spots where the middle two kilohertz range might dip. This right here is the issue that gets created when you take your mixes from your studio and put it somewhere like in your car or on that small little speaker or people's earbuds. When you get these unwanted colorations in your room, you are being lied to. Basically, when you're getting stuff out of your speakers or any audio out of your speakers, you are looking for a flat response. It's better or more accurate when you have a flat response. When I say flat response, I'm basically saying that from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz, you're getting a very flat response, meaning nothing's being boosted, nothing's being cut, and you're getting the most accurate sound coming out of your speakers. That's what we're trying to accomplish when we put these bass traps up or diffusion and all of these things. We're looking for a more flat response so that what we're mixing on these monitors or on these headphones are accurately reproducing those frequencies in our room. So, with the Sonarworks reference for uh, uh, microphone and software and hardware does is, it takes a calibration of your room. It literally calibrates your speakers, listens to the environment that's going on, and then sets more of an EQ curve that resembles a more flatter response off of how it reacted to your room. So this can be extremely powerful and save you tons of money in sound treatment to reproduce a sound out of your speakers that is more accurate to the actual sound that you should be hearing coming out of them. So. I'm gonna show you guys a slight walkthrough of how to use this thing, how it works in your system, and basically everything about it. So let's get right to it. Okay, so first and foremost, I'm greeted with this screen right here. Welcome to Reference for a Measure. Measure your speakers. Let's get to it. It's gonna ask me a few questions. Phantom Power 48 is switched on and is power measuring mic. Yes, I have my 48 volts on. Make sure your microphone input is not routed directly into your speaker outputs. It isn't. A single audio interface is used for mic input and output yes uh, audio interface sample rate is set to 44 okay now it has my microphone id which i've already put in it's cool it's just letting me know what this microphone basically does my output channels is from my prism sound titan a1 and a2 which is basically just the output of my actual speakers let's play it right quick just to make sure we get getting sound please adjust the volume of your output device my voice should sound at normal conversation volume left speaker right speaker please dope. adjust them dope so i'm getting sound out of that let's go adjust the microphone input gain first let's adjust microphone gain so that we can make sure we detect the microphone correctly during measurements this is awesome because now it's going to make sure that i'm actually getting the appropriate amount of volume coming out of speakers to calibrate the room that's pretty dope how to position the microphone correctly keep the microphone within your listening position okay guess we got to stand up and we have to do it this way so I'm standing up now this is basically my listening position right here where I would be listening here. So this is where I'm gonna set it because this is basically my listening position, right about here. Okay, great. So we did the first part. Going on. Determine the distance between the speakers. 
Okay, cool. We're going to determine the distance between speakers. <laughs> Woo! I think it finished. Okay, now that we've done all of that calibration, all of these funky sounds coming out of our speakers, now the Sonarworks is basically, the Sonarworks program is basically letting us know what our room uh, basically told the uh, microphone. And the program is gonna show us what in my room is boosted, is what is cut. It's gonna show me the frequency response of my room. Let's take a look. Okay, so now that we look inside, uh, this is the frequency response in my room and it is one it is extremely not perfect and now it's letting me know what is colored in my room i'm going to explain it to you when i look at it it's saying that there's a 6 db boost in about that 150 hertz range 200 uh hertz range so there's a big boost at that 150 hertz range which tells me that uh it can be an issue in a sense of my bass frequencies, uh, as far as bass lines and stuff like that. It could sound a lot louder uh, than it actually is, which would cause me to uh, pr pretty much pull back on my bass frequencies when in when really um, I should be probably leaving that alone because it just sounds like there's a lot more of it. So this is the issue when you're mixing. If you're mixing and your frequency response curve in your actual studio isn't flat or you just don't know your room that well, if you have a boost in your room at the 200 hertz range, then guess what you're probably gonna do? You're probably gonna be cutting that range when you don't need to. So this is something uh, in basically the things that we're looking for. I also see a big boost in the one kilohertz range, which tells me that there's a boost in that presence frequency range, which tells me I'll probably be uh, uh, pulling back on my vocals when in general, I could be actually leaving it alone or giving it some more uh, because the room is enhancing that frequency. Uh, then I look over here, I see another dip at, let's see, my low, low end looks pretty good. It's, it's a little bit of a boost, but nothing I'm worried about. But I see another dip in that 800 hertz range. So I see a dip in that 800 hertz range, which tells me that uh, maybe sometimes I might boost a little bit in the 800 hertz range because I feel like it's lacking some of that. So what is Sonarworks going to do with this information? Long story short, what it's going to do with this information is it's going to take this and take and create a frequency curve that makes this more flat. So it's gonna take that 200 Hertz range that you see right here or 150 Hertz range, and it's gonna bring it down about six DB to make it sound more flat for this room. So what I'm gonna be hearing out of my speakers is gonna be a flatter response, uh, a more accurate representation of my mix and sound and all around just uh, something that is more true and that should translate to other places outside of my studio a lot better. Let's dive in deeper into this. So I'm gonna call the profile of these speakers uh, my home studio for now. Let's call it my home studio. Cause basically I can create a bunch of different calibrations at a bunch of different places and save them right into the program. So that if I am uh, at my studio, I can literally bring up my home studio. Or if I take my laptop and I go to another studio, I can calibrate those speakers and have a whole different profile for that room as well. So right now it's asking me, what is my output device? Uh, and it's basically just trying to get an idea of my left and right channels. Obviously it's gonna be my Prism Sound Titan. Uh, I'm gonna make sure that the calibration profile is my home studio, as you see. And now I'm gonna say add preset. Boom. So now I've added the preset literally to my output of my Titan. And the beautiful thing about the system-wide side of this, as far as that app that we have, as far as the Sonarworks reference for system-wide plugin is, it happens system-wide, meaning if whether I'm in my DAW or if I'm just playing music off my desktop on in the studio, it's basically gonna, gonna continue to use this profile of making it flatter no matter what coming out of the Prism Sound Titan. So any sound that comes out of this Titan is going to be calibrated to that more more flat frequency response that we've created. Now you can toggle back and forth between this. You can turn it off if you want to. If you wanna just hear what it originally sounded like and, sa and hear what it sounded like as a flat frequency response. Now granted, uh, I could probably play you some music, but there's nothing like sitting in this area and physically hearing it for what it is as opposed to hearing some compressed uh, uh, audio over the internet or wherever you're listening to this on. But let's take a look at a few things. This says simulated after, meaning this is what it's basically playing back music uh, as of now with this flatter frequency response. 
we go over here and click before, and now it's showing us what it was before this actually uh, calibrated and made a more flat frequency response. Like I told you, there was a 6 dB boost in the room that it detected at that 150 kind of hertz range. So now the frequency response is more flat, as you can see for the after uh, line that we have here and things of that nature. And you can see across the board, it's just boosting and cutting in spots where um, uh, it's compensating for those drop offs, for those boosts and things of that nature. So this is really, really powerful. You can play around with this, but I just wanted to give you guys a rough idea of what this thing can do. It can do a bunch of different things. You can do a bass boost. Uh, you could do a uh, change what you want the target if you want a, a room that sounds brighter you can do that within the plugin and there's so many ways to experiment with it and basically just get an idea of what it is but i just wanted to give you guys an idea of what it did uh as opposed to diving deep really really deep into this thing i just wanted to give you guys on the surface level of what this thing can do and how it can be advantageous to having in your home studio setup so i'll leave a description for this particular hardware and software in the description uh, below. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description below. Make sure you go down there if you want it. Please uh, support the channel and definitely grab it for yourself. Sonar Works, and then we're so great. I was so grateful for them for actually sending me the product. I really did enjoy it. And I only, you guys know me, I only like to really review products that I actually really feel like you guys can actually use. Something I think that can help immensely and save you a lot of money as far as sound treatment or any of those things is concerned. So make sure you comment, like, subscribe. Also make sure you follow us at Help Me Devon on the Instagram. And also make sure if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, you can hit us right below in the comment section below. We also want you to follow our Discord community with a lot of aspiring engineers like yourself. And um, once again, I'll leave the link for this in the description below. And um, until next time, you guys.